Hey guys, it's a beautiful day. Just down there is Cardiff, and I guess this is Swami's. It's a famous surf break. I love to surf, and it's just awesome to see this kind of weather. Hanging out near the Electra headquarters, <laughs> and this is Robin. Hi there. Robin, it's awesome to be here today with you because you've gotten us access to all three of the, well, I guess these are the Towny Goes. This one doesn't have the Towny Go name, but that's the Loft Go, mm -hmm, right? That's right? Yeah, and I've, I've already looked at a couple of these in the past, actually going way back. Uh, the Townie, that was the first one. It's been around for several years and it's the most affordable. It's like $25.99. Yep, that's right. It's yeah. our original e-bike model, the Townie Go. And it's, you know, pretty approachable, low step, cruiser, upright, big fat tires, 26 yep. inch versus 28 inch on uh, the, this, the loft. Mm -hmm. And then this is the commute. So they're a little bit more active. The cranks are moved back a little bit more below the the seat tube versus forward you guys have that patented flat foot design right yeah we do so in our flat foot models we've moved the crank forward relax the angle of the seat tube so there's that really easy upright riding position that's ergonomic um, and allows you to plant your feet flat on the ground at any time yeah plus an e-bike motor it's awesome well yeah and the cool thing about it in addition to being able to like sit on this saddle and have your feet flat down and stabilizing especially for a heavier bike uh, but then when you do bring them up you get that like forward, more full leg extension. So as we move to the more active bikes with a larger wheel diameter, you're spanning cracks a little bit better because you have a lower attack angle. Just that like cruising momentum is there. It's just a little bit more active. Uh, and, and then coming back to price for a second. So the Lost Go that we're really focusing on here, it's $27.99, so $200 more. Yep. And then up to the Commute Go, and that one's $29.99. And I think the big difference I noticed is that that one has the performance line motor and it's just a little bit more torque. So if you live outside of the city and you're coming in, and you're going up and down hills, which we we do have some hills yeah, here. We're gonna we be able to some hills, some hills. To <laughs> we test. came up a big hill. Can you tell? It was. We're gonna do that later on the ride test. Um, but this was this is still really capable. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in. We said it's $27.99. It still has the Bosch uh, Power Pack 400. So Bosch does have a 500, but this one's a little bit lighter weight, 5.5 pounds. Still plenty of range on a bike like this. Up to I think it's like. 80 miles it, it really depends on the terrain how inflated the tires are the weight that you're carrying this does have two really cool racks it's got a 20 pound max on this front rack really stylish i love how everything matches and the bikes come in three different colors yep that's the, right the loft in particular so yeah. it, not white like that but kind of a cream a gloss cream color, yeah. and then this teal uh, An really aqua, we call aqua it. Yeah. right and we i take our, our color seriously <laughs> yeah it's it's got to get it right and then this one's just gloss black Right, so it all matches. They've got the fenders, aluminum alloy, extra wide. They give you plenty of coverage. Uh, and then back here, there is a chain cover. So that's gonna keep your pants or your skirt or whatever from getting snagged, getting greasy. Um, this is steel. Okay, so there's there, most of the things on this bike are um, you know, aluminum alloy, but I think, was the handlebar steel too? We were looking I at that. I double check, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I got all the specs and stuff. Part of the reason I'm double checking here too is that these handlebars are not stuck. The ones that come with it, they're, they're a little bit narrower, which makes sense if you're in an urban environment. And think about it, loft, like you have a loft downtown. You're, this is like a, designed to be their city bike, I guess. Um, and, I, you know, coming back to the handlebar width, if you're going between cars or in, in and out of doors and stuff, bringing it in a little bit tighter, but they're still swept back and they give you that nice upright body position for comfort. And they combine with this awesome saddle. It's got some springs and stuff. And then the tires, oh, that's the other steel thing. It's the fork, right? And you can see it's raked out a little bit like that. That's kind of nice because when you're turning this bike, if you're pedaling, you don't want to have a toe strike on that fender and by you know bringing the, the wheel out a little bit, also just for stability and stuff. But a steel fork, it has vibration dampening qualities. Okay, so comfort, right? Sweat back bars, we've got these more flat grips, a little bit more active, still comfortable saddle, spring, and then we've got these tires. These are Schwabi Balloon Fat Frank. They are 28 by two inches. So two inches is like that, the width there. Um, they do have the reflective sidewall stripes for safety, integrated lights on this bike. Unfortunately, that is not the correct light. I wanna bring you back over here to our friend, the Commute, and this is the correct light. So that's a Spinninga light. Kendo, and then on the rear, I think we've got the same light as well. So yeah, there we go, the Pixio. So having integrated lights, they both run off that main battery. So you don't have to worry about turning them on independently or forgetting them, that kind of thing. I really appreciate that. And if you opt for 
I guess it's the aqua or the cream, you're gonna be a little bit more visible from the side. I call that, that's like the visual footprint if you're riding in traffic. Yep. And then these fenders, check it out. Okay, so um, I guess the fenders and this bike match this helmet and they would give you increased visual footprint and style points because yes. it all matches. You're matched it's up to that one. It's all about the style points, let's be honest. Electra does a really good job on that. Um, and the bill on this one's actually reflective too. And the, the little graphic on the side of the battery, they're doing a, a little bit of that stuff. So Electra dates back to 1993. Yep. This is like their 25th anniversary right now. That's right. And then in I was it 2014, mm -hmm. Trek made the acquisition. Mm -hmm. So now you guys have even broader reach and you can, yep. I think economies of scale comes to mind here and that's back to the pricing, right? So $25.99, $27.99 or $29.99. Um, this is a higher quality bike. It's got the Bosch drive system. You get a two year comprehensive warranty and you have the dealer support. So you can go in and test ride it. And this one only comes in one size. Correct. It's highly adjustable. Yep, that's right. There's the seat post and stuff. It can go up and down. And then the handlebars, you see how there's a seven degree rise in this? You could flip it if you wanted to get really aggressive. And it's a little bit more standard. So this is an inch and an eighth straight head tube. And then 25.4 uh, millimeter handlebars. That's still a little bit narrower. And again, I think that gives it maybe a little bit of vibration dampening in the handlebars. I know I'm obsessed with that, but you know, it is all about comfort. And then there's the padded comfort grips over on these models. So, you know, it's sort of comfort to performance is, is what comes to mind for me. Um, yeah, and then coming back to some of the other specs and stuff, I, I guess, you know, I appreciate that the, the cables are all internally routed. With the black, the battery does blend in and then the motor casing kind of hides a little bit too. And the frame, it, it is a step through design, okay? So by having uh, a thicker down tube right here, but then having this like, I, to me, it's sort of a retro look, but it's got this top tube that's two sections and then reinforcement points. It reduces frame flex while you're riding around, especially if you have the front rack loaded. I said that was 20 pound max weight. The rear rack is 55 pound max weight. So you could really load this thing up and um, there's, like a loop here for bungees or maybe if you have panniers they have that little locking lever on the side you could really use this to get around and commute same thing with the commute over there uh, and and then Electra has this really cool bag uh, it's it's awesome because it actually fits right in there's like this plug at the front and maybe you can help me out with yeah, this absolutely. yeah it slides back in and links in right here smoothly and then on the other side you just have this that piece that pops right down just into the rack. Clicks in. Look at this. I, I love that because it's super fast and easy. It stays pretty far out of the way of that saddle. A mm -hmm. lot of times I'm thinking like the, some of the cheaper bikes, they just aren't designed with like the accessories in mind mm -hmm. as well. Yep. And so you end up with a situation where you can't put the saddle all the way down without colliding into the rack. And that's kind of a bummer because then you have to have the saddle high. And if you're someone who's a little bit shorter and there's this one frame size, you're trying to make it work you make all these compromises and end up with paneers or something on the front. I got to complain a little bit. These kind of racks, they, they look nice, but when you steer, they steer with you. So you can imagine having your gear, you stop and then see how it turns to the side. If there was a lot of weight there, it's just not, it's not as good in my opinion. You, you lose some of the utility that you have on the back. Yeah, it looks nice. It is removable, but I, I appreciate that the lights on it and that the light points where you steer. That's a big thing for me. I already talked about visibility. Safety is another big issue. And I love that this bike has hydraulic disc brakes, Tektro Ariga, large 180 millimeter rotor up front. That's where a lot of the stopping power comes from because your weight shifts forward. And then 160 millimeters in the rear, really clean drivetrain on this bike because they have an internally geared Inter-8. It's an eight speed internally geared hub from Shimano. And you'll notice that there's actually, it's like a chain tensioner here. That's a lot tougher than a derailleur. So if this bike bumps into another bike at the rack or tips over or something, it, the drivetrain's just gonna stay really clean and you're probably not gonna get as much chain bounce uh, because you do have that tensioner. So I appreciate that 20 tooth sprocket in the rear, 18 tooth up front. The, the smaller sprocket gives you a mechanical advantage. And this is the older Bosch active line motor. So it offers up to 50 Newton meters of torque compared to 63 Newton meters of torque on these other two. Got some sightseers, maybe. Um, so you get, you get some more torque on those other bikes, but you're gonna get more efficiency and a quieter operation on this one. The sprocket, you can't really see it. Again, 18 tooth, it spins two and a half revolutions for every single crank revolution. That's a reduction gearing that's going on inside the motor. 
um, there's a little bit of friction that happens. So if you're riding this bike unpowered, you're still spinning that sprocket two and a half times for every revolution. You have a huge mechanical advantage with these 170 millimeter crank arms. It's not a huge deal, but it's something that I call out because it does differentiate uh, Bosch motors, specifically the performance line and then these, these older active lines here. So if you're someone who wants to pedal beyond 20 miles per hour, you know, the motor, that's where it kind of cuts out. Unless you're in Europe, then, then they have 25 kilometers per hour, roughly 15.5 miles per hour. There's just a little bit of extra friction there, but this is going to be one of the more quiet and relatively lightweight uh, motors. So altogether, this bike, without that goodie bag, I was weighing it earlier and it's 58.3 pounds, which is, you know, it's on the heavier side. There are 50, 55 pound bikes but some of those don't have the full color matched alloy fenders. They don't have the additional racks, the lights and stuff. So that's one of the trade-offs. And I have found that internally geared hubs like this, they do weigh a little bit more. The Intra 8 gives you up to 370 degrees of shifting range, which is, which is pretty good. And you can shift it standstill. So you're thinking like, well, I got a little bit more weight because of the drive system, but the drive system really empowers you because as you shift gears, the motor gets a mechanical advantage. That's the whole, that's one of the big benefits of a mid drive. And this one has shift detection. So Bosch is definitely, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier on the drivetrain, not as much of an issue when you have an internally geared hub, but this hub protects itself. I've noticed that if I'm climbing a hill trying to shift, it goes and it, it waits until I ease off a little bit and then it chink, and it goes into, into gear. Um, and again, that's gonna protect itself, but it does mean you, you have to kind of like ease off for a second. Um, I'll show that in a, in a little bit. Also, the battery and the motor weight are really well positioned here towards the center and relatively low on the frame. And if you're stepping over this frame, you're not gonna kick the battery box because of that, that top tubing design. Um, it's just really well done. It's great. Compared to one of the older Electra bikes that had like a battery in the, in the back. And I still see a lot of cruisers with that design and it creates frame flex, makes the bike easier to tip over. This is the way to go. Um, I'm definitely, I'm liking that. And then back to this, this goodie box here for a second. Um, one of the things this bike does not have, so it has fenders, it has lights, it doesn't have a bottle cage bosses, but Electra does sell, sell these little, you know, handlebar like cup holders. I think that's kind of fun. Just take that out for a second and then this ring. So if you've got your little coffee cup or whatever and you're cruising along in the morning, I appreciate that. And then they've got this like fun bell. You know, uh, you guys know I like the bells. Uh, and then check this out. This is the Bosch charger that comes with it. It's the compact, which probably saves them some money. It's a little bit lighter weight too. It's like 1.3 pounds instead of 1.7. Doesn't take up a whole lot of space. It's got that nice proprietary plug. You can charge the battery on or off the bike. So this is what the charging port looks like on the side. You can tell how full the battery is by just pressing that minus sign and these little LEDs light up. So they're five ticks, 20% uh, steps, if you will. And then this Abus Shield lock. So when you get the battery, it comes with one key by Abus. They, they do a really good job with their locking cylinders and that's here, but it's also back here. And you'll notice that that cafe lock is in the locked position. So in order to take the key out, you actually have to lock it. And that keeps people from just grabbing the bike and walking off with it. They'd have to be pretty motivated to pick up the 50, 58 pound bike and run off with it. So I feel like that's a, that's a great first line of defense. And then for like 40 bucks extra, they have this chain you can get and it plugs in right here into the side of that cafe lock. So you can wrap it around like a, just a pole or a bike rack. And all, I love how all this stuff just fits in the bag. It's so tight and clean. Also, there's these cool handles. So when you reach down in like this, there's two of those. So you can pull it off and take it with you into work or, or whatever. And that, along with the battery, you could also bring the battery inside with you. I'm gonna try to get the battery off real quick, show you what that looks like. And so I've got my key. Just insert that twist and it springs back, which is kind of nice. Careful not to hit the frame tubing. It's got that nice big loop at the top, makes it easier to carry around and safer because you, you don't want to drop these. These are like 800 bucks to replace. 36 volt, 11 amp hours. Again, it's the Power Pack 400. There's the other plug option on the base of the battery. It's ideal to store this thing in a cool, dry location. Extreme heat and extreme cold can wear the cells out more quickly. Um, and just extending the life of your bike is kind of nice. If you haven't ridden this thing for a month or two, it's good to check on this battery and maybe top it off. I've heard that going below 20% starts to stress the cells, the chemistry sort of changes. So just sort of keep it charged, keep it safe. 
Uh, if you do need a replacement though, if you lose it or drop it or just someday you need to replace it, you can get these all over the world. You know, this bike is actually sold in a whole bunch of markets. Um, the US, Canada, Europe, parts of Asia. It's fantastic uh, that way. And if you're traveling, you can usually borrow a power pack, whether it's 400 or 500, the casing fits into the same interface, which is really nice. So a lot of times you'll be in a position where, you know, maybe you're moving or you're going to, on a tour or something like that, you could actually bring your bike more easily and then rent or borrow a battery. And of course, I usually take the battery off whenever I'm mounting this to my car or lifting it up. It just, you know, takes off those five and a half pounds. Uh, when you are ready to get to, to ride and you've charged that battery up and you're mounting it, make sure you hear it click. So I can take out the key and then I have to push down on this thing. There we go, you can kind of hear it click. So now we know it's secure. It's not gonna be bouncing all around. Um, and we're kind of ready to go. We can get up into the control system. But before we do that, I want to just take another quick look back, maybe mention the kickstand. It gets the job done. It's not adjustable length. It's classy looking, but it, it is right there in the center of the frame versus being towards the rear, which means you can get pedal lock. And that's, that's what happens. So if this is parked in your garage and you're trying to figure out like, okay, I'm walking it backwards, the pedals are gonna rotate backwards and they can lock. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do what I'm about to do here, sort of walk the bike forward. And I can't, because of the frame lock. Okay, like, that's the next step. So I've got my key in my pocket, insert that, and then I'm gonna twist it, and it just stows. And now I can't get the key out. So that's a good way to keep you from losing the key. But if you had a keychain connected to it, that might be dangling around, and bumping into the fenders and scratching the paint and stuff. So I'm kind of mixed. I think you get a couple of these keys and you might always just leave one here and then keep another one on your keychain for the battery. Okay, so I'd have to walk the bike forward like this and then stow the kickstand before I could actually ride. We'll take a look at these pedals. They're nice, they're rigid alloy and then they have rubber tread versus, you know, hard like sharp pins or something. So this is this is pretty good. They're VP. Um, there are other options out there. You could get some logo pedals with like some bigger pins, larger platform, especially if you've got bigger feet and you just want to stay, stay connected, uh, especially if you're riding in a lot of rain, that kind of thing. And I should point out that these tires are not stock either. Uh, the ones that come with it are like all brown. They don't have that white sidewall. So, you know, I apologize for a little bit of inconsistency, but it's really neat to see them back to back with these other bikes. And these ones are completely stock. So we've got the the black tire on that one with the black touch points and then the, the brown fat Frank. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate that. They all have puncture protection built in, which is nice too. And then you'll, you'll notice the difference here where it has a double leg kickstand on the Townie Go versus the single size kickstand. It's a little bit sportier, maybe a little bit lighter weight. I just wanna look at these bikes again, back to back. So there's the quill stem. It can kind of go up and down and the bars that are swept back a little bit still got the bell the headlight on the commute it still steers with you but it's just not mounted to that front rack and then if we come over to the townie that's the flat foot design where the motor's further forward compared to being more directly below which I mean, again this is more active this is a little bit more that recliner body position and then the quill stem with the mid-rise or you know almost high-rise handlebars and i asked them like you know this this comes back to you it gives you that upright position and they said well this one still gives you that and they can be swiveled forward or back but that's what they've always used for the for the townie before it was electric so they're trying to preserve that right and even wider fenders the balloon tires the 26 inch brings the whole thing down closer to the ground i hope that gives you guys some uh, just some insight into the differences between these three different models here and i want to call out 27.2 millimeters on that seat post so if you want to go even more comfy than the, the sprung saddle you could get a suspension seat post and then really be you know feeling that with the upright handlebars and just yeah like nice and soft uh, the challenge is that's going to raise that minimum uh, saddle height there to up, you know a few more inches whereas right now it can really go low and just make it so approachable even though it's a more active motor you know spindle directly below the seat tube it's not quite as far forward so i hope that i hope that clears things up for you and gives you some perspectives as i said before i've reviewed those bikes so you can compare them back to back and look for those little differences or chat in the forum and get some feedback from people who actually own them and you know have, have been able to use them Okay guys, I moved the bike into a better position in terms of the lighting so that we could go over to the display. But I want to remind you that 
The battery's charged up, it's locked in securely, and now we move up here to the cockpit. And I love this, this is my favorite display. It's the Bosch Intuvia, because it's so intuitive. This thing is removable. There's a little plastic tab around this side and you can just slide it off if you want to. Perfect for those urban situations where maybe you're parked at a bike rack and you don't want this to get scratched up or stolen. Um, you know, and that's what the mount looks like with it off. This does swivel forward and back so you can reduce glare while you're riding. And hopefully you're not getting too much of that with these, these camera shots. I like that the button pad for operating the display is so easy to reach. It's right there near the left grip. You don't have to reach too far. And it's, it's pretty intuitive. Like the eye in the middle is rubber and you can feel it. And then the plus and the minus are above and below, as you would expect. So you don't even really have to look down. You can just be kind of scanning the horizon, talking to your friend or whatever, clicking for more or less power. And then over on the right, that's where we've got our grip shifter, which again, I can shift it even though we're not riding and it doesn't hurt the thing. It'll just engage like once I start pedaling. Maybe not if I'm pushing super hard, it might have to wait a second to engage to protect itself, but just really clean cockpit, uh, very easy to see this display because it's a little bit larger and it has a micro USB port built into the right hand side and that is functional so you can plug your maybe a smartphone or some speakers I've seen people put Christmas lights on their bike and it could all be USB powered 5 volts 500 milliamp output on that so to turn this on first you hit the power button over here it boots up very quickly and at the top we've got that same 5 bar battery indicator in the middle we have speed, and then in the bottom we have all these trip stats. The top right, that's sort of like a power meter. There's these little dots that would appear as the motor is working more. Right now it's in off assist, but if I press plus, we can go up to eco, tour, sport, or turbo. Turbo is gonna give you the most power. It's also gonna use that battery quicker, okay? And then down here, we were talking about the trip stats. I can press I, or there's that I again. So I'm gonna press it. We go from clock to maximum speed, average speed, trip time, range. Range is really cool because depending on what level of assist we've chosen, it dynamically calculates. And it's based on the battery capacity, the level of assist, and your last mile of riding. So if, if you're a particularly lightweight, active rider, it might say you can go further. So it's, it's very dynamic. Bosch does a good job uh, with their control system that way. I'm gonna go ahead and arrow down using the minus key from turbo to eco. And it says, hey, with less than half a battery, you can go at least 11 miles. I mean, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. So you can see as I arrow up to turbo, it says four miles. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's a heavier bike. Depends on who was riding this before me, but um, kind of interesting. And then the headlight button there. So if I press that, it says lights on. And that's where you can see there's a LED. I like how this light's pretty far out of the way of your gear if you have bags or anything. And then that headlight, again, built into the rack. This is not the headlight you'll get with the bike, but it's still, it would be mounted roughly in the same position. Back here to the different readouts. Uh, we go to odometer and trip distance. And you can clear any of these menus by holding the reset. So 0.86 miles, hold reset, and it goes to zero. So that's really cool. And I think if you hold reset and I, it goes into the settings. So you can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and adjust wheel size and some of that other stuff. Um, again, great display. Keep in mind that this display does have a little like a, a battery in it. So if you've had this bike for a long time and you haven't been riding it, and you're like, well, the battery here is charged, this battery can, can eventually die after a couple of years. It happened to my uncle who owns a Bosch powered electric bike and kind of unscrew the display and replace that battery. And of course, with Electra slash Trek, you have tons of dealers and a lot of them carry the Bosch system, even if it's not this specific bike. So it's just, it feels very uh, reliable that way. Uh, one thing that does not work is this walk mode button. So if I press it, usually it would say walk, hold plus, and you'd hold the plus button and then the, the bike would move itself forward slowly. And that can be useful if you've gotten off the bike and you're pushing it up a hill or through the grass at a park. A Trek has disabled that for all of their North America e-bikes. They're probably just trying to be really sensitive not to have anything that seems like a throttle. To me, it's overkill because it's like, you know, three and a half miles per hour. That could be useful when you're pushing a heavy bike, but you know, you still get near instantaneous pedal assist once you're on it and it is very capable in terms of climbing i mentioned 50 newton meters of torque it's also giving you up to i think about 105 rpm pedal support so you can pedal 105 rotations per minute and the, the motor's gonna stay with you whereas the performance line cruise these ones go up to 120 rpm so if you're again you're spinning a little bit faster and you're more active i would i would go with the commute 
Um, and then maybe they put the Performance Line Cruze on the Townie originally because it was more available, that motor at the time. And also it's a heavier bike because it's, you know, bigger tires and stuff. I don't know, kind of interesting to think about. And then the price points. So I guess that's about it. I think we're ready to, to go on our ride. Robin, are you ready too? Yeah, let's do it. Hello. <laughs> Sweet. So I'm just gonna go out here and film the bike and then we'll we'll do some hill stuff. I'm in the actually I'm gonna do the frame shake test. So you can see the, the bag wobbling around, but this the frame is is pretty stiff because of that double tube design. I'm in turbo, which is the loudest, because I want you to be able to hear and sort of see the the motor operating, but with that chain cover, it's gonna be a little difficult. So you can see almost as soon as I start pedaling and stop pedaling, that motor is right there with me. It's, it's not getting out of hand. Um, I definitely appreciate that, especially if you're riding in an urban environment where there might be some extra cars around and you're focused on, on that, navigating. I'm gonna shift down to a lower gear, start pedaling again. Yep, no problem. And then this is the, the hill I was talking about. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty extreme hill, right? This is, this is really something. And I'm gonna just turn the bike around and climb it. You ready to do this? Yeah. There we go. I can hear the motor struggling a little bit and I left this in gear two so I could make it even easier. But I'm not out of breath. I'm, I'm like upright filming with my other hand and we made it and you could see the power boy. It's all the way up. That little chart on the right. And there's, there you are too, you made it. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> That was, that was fantastic. And that's the biggest hurdle I think for a lot of people. If you haven't been riding a, a bike for a while and you're concerned about the weight and you know going all the way without getting tired or if there's rain or wind, it can be exhausting. And I feel like this system just does a really good job of overcoming those. This is a class one electric bike. All of these e-bikes are. So it's like the most permissible out there. There's also class two and class three. Class one is the most legal. You could ride it on like trails and stuff in California if you wanted to, that'd be pretty brave with the fenders and stuff. Um, it'd be fun to, s to see this bike in action. Do you mind trading me? Let's do it. Okay, so just put that kickstand to use. There we go. Stand up, you're in turbo. Oh, of course, <laughs> turbo mode. There we go. Ready? So I'm gonna follow Robin and let's just do it. There we go. where those hydraulic disc brakes come into <laughs> real handy. Yep. Here she comes. <laughs> Looking good. I love that light. The active line motor is so quiet. Yeah, just really, are you still on turbo? Yep. Will you shift gears while pedaling kind of like harder? Up. Up. Sure. Yep. Shifting all right? Okay. Yep. There we go. Yeah, I could hear it. So with the shift detection and on this relatively flat surface, yep. it's not a problem. Um, I have had those experiences where you're climbing and you try to shift. I'm gonna try to do this. I wanna show you that clicking noise I was talking about so you know that's not really a problem. It's the self-protection. Whoa, boy. That's the clicking noise. You hear it's like And then as soon as I stopped pedaling for a second, it, uh, it shifted into place, so. Okay guys, from here you can see that steel chain cover. I love that it keeps your pants clean, uh, but be careful because as it gets nicked up, it can rust compared to aluminum. Um, also, you're gonna be able to hear the motor starting and stopping. Listen for that chain going through. I'll be shifting gears and you can hear that clicking, you know, if it doesn't engage right away. Um, and for these fenders and stuff, just I'm gonna go over some bumps and try to give you some idea of how quiet this is uh, when you're actually using it. And I am in turbo mode purposefully to make the motor a little bit, a little bit louder. So it'll be probably quieter than this if you're riding in any of the other assist levels.
Nice, so I went off a curb there purposefully just to, you know, jostle things around a little bit. Um, you could hear the tink, 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 and I think that was actually the chain hitting the chain cover. Uh, I don't see a slap guard on the right chain stay, which would be nice. You could put a piece of clear plastic like packaging tape if you wanted, or there's these neoprene wraps, but it's just such a beautiful frame trying to keep this from getting too nicked up. Um, the fender's very solid. Yeah, they, they weren't rattling around a whole lot. That's the cool thing about aluminum alloy, and they do have like folded edges so they're not sharp, and it gives you a little bit, little bit more rigidity. Uh, and then, you know, relatively comfortable, just the body position, the bigger tires, the saddle. It's worked out pretty well. Okay, on this view, same thing. You can maybe just see me pedaling. Notice I am gonna pedal beyond what the motor can support because it maxes out around that 105 RPM. It is definitely a little bit more work because the bike's heavier and you know, you're know you not getting assistance, maybe even a little bit of drag here, um, but it's still very doable. What I found is that some people actually wanna go a little bit slower and that's where the different the four different levels of assist are. You don't have to go 20, you can just relax a little bit. Um, it's all about how hard and fast you're pedaling and what gear you're in back there. appreciate that these tires are they're a little bit fatter and that gives you some stability mm -hmm. so I was able to ride with no hands and go across a little bit of grass there and it wasn't like I was sinking in or struggling Woo! That. fantastic <laughs> well this was a lot of fun it's always cool to go to the headquarters and get some background on the company thank you so much for your help today yeah, riding around Robin out. yeah I'm it's looking forward to you know the future the fun colors the different designs you guys really blew it out when when was the uh the loft launched we came out with our two additional e-bikes the town and commute go and loft go last year in april of 2017. okay yeah. fantastic for the full written review on this standover height width length all the stuff i do i'll see you back at electricbikereview.com of course have fun out there and ride safe sweet cool hey guys we're inside at electra got some cool signs and just a whole bunch of sweet bikes laying around uh, I wanted to show you the display, the backlighting. See how it's like that nice blue glow? So if it's at night or in the morning, you're gonna be able to see it. And then on the wall, that's, uh, that's some headlight action here. Again, it's not the stock headlight that would come with it, um, but it's still giving you a pretty good, let's see if we can do that on one of these other bikes. So I turn it on, hit the backlighting. There we go. That's the actual light, still good. Still got like a nice beam over there. Maybe not quite as bright as the Supernova, um, but yeah, good stuff overall. <laughs>